Hey friends, this is another Lo-Fi Let's Play with me, Lee Alexander, revisiting old adventure games mostly thanks to virtualapple.org. Um, today we're going to look at The Curse of Crowley Manor, which is another one in the Apple Other Ventures series uh, by Jim Pearson, who also uh, often worked with co-writers, in this case one Norm Sailor. If those names sound familiar to you, it's because we played an Apple Other Venture already. In episode two or three of the Lo-Fi Let's Play series, we looked at uh, The Quake, is about the earthquake of San Francisco. And uh, as you can see, this has the same introductory sequence that promises the new format in adventure games, uh, state-of-the-art in graphic adventures, uh, psychological realism never seen before, breathtaking graphics, the plot quality of a fine novel. And I was amused by that sort of mandate the first time I played that game, given that, that these are our computer games that were made in the very early 80s, 1982 for this one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it was pretty, um, you know, a pretty impressive uh, set of objectives to try to advance the medium that much to create that degree of immersion with these very crude graphics and, and I laughed a little bit when we played the quake but now the more that I play uh, Jim Pearson's work the more I begin to think he was uh, very sincere and ahead of his time um, so let's look at this one the curse of Crowley Manor which is a horror game and um, there is something incredibly mature about it. Look, they're asking us to optimize the colors. Um, looks okay to me. Uh, this crack was done by those sweet, lovable guys, the adventurers. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, so as the game loads, um, I want to tell you that what tends to be interesting about the other adventures is how sparing they are in the information they give you. Mechanically, it's interesting because it uses the visible items conceit. You know what you can and can't interact with because the machine will tell you whether it is effectively um, visible or not. So uh, this game also follows the same conceit. Uh, it looks like the game is beginning. So slowly here what appears to be an office is drawn for us. You are in a large office. A large window is here and some rosewood furniture. Okay, let's just let's just have a look at the space that uh, we're given to interact with here. A calendar and a nameplate are on the desk. Okay, look calendar. April 2nd, 1913, and look, nameplate. It says, Inspector Black of Scotland Yard. Interesting, so without much text exposition and without an animated sequence or anything like that, uh, we've learned who we are, what year it is, and now we look out. It is London at night. Um, I've been spending the summer uh, sort of living in London, and I've become very fond of, of this city, so it's sort of nice that this game has an appreciation for London. Um, a closed door is east. Um, what is that on our desk? It looks like a telephone. Look, telephone. It appears to be ordinary. Can we open the desk? Oh, a telephone on the desk rings. Answer, phone. A voice says, this is Officer Strahd. Come to the Crowley estate now there's been a murder. So already we're put into the premise of this game where we know we've got to go to the uh, Crowley Manor and discover what that's all about, uh, why the murder has taken place. Um, the title of this game, Curse of Crowley Manor, gives us a clue that perhaps it is due to a murder. So uh, we're on a landing, a stairway leads south to the street. Um, let's continue. And we find ourselves outside of our office um, with a handsome cab waiting for us in the street. And uh, you can see the driver and, and the back of the horse there. Look, driver. It appears to be ordinary. The driver smiles. Now that's a good sign. Already being taken into the lovely atmosphere of the city. The driver says, climb in, governor. So let's climb in. We do have 50 shillings here in our inventory as well as a revolver and an ID card. So we are in the cab. All right. Look, driver. Talk, driver. Where to, governor? Well, Crowley Manor. No. So we've given him the instruction and we're, we're going to our job. Look at this. We're, we're in a carriage ride through London in a game from 1982. A small vial sits next to him on the seat. Let's take that. I never know when you might need a vial. Oh, get vial. The, ga the cab is passing through Trafalgar Square. One particular conceit of the other ventures, where uh, normally text parser games understand the verbs take and get equally, uh, this game does not, and it only prefers get. It's a beautiful night. You can see Big Ben's Tower to the south. Look, 
Big Ben. We're doing some little tourism. Big Ben appears to be ordinary, according to this parser. The cab pulls into a tree-lined lane and up a long driveway. It's almost like we're riding through London at night together, friends, on our way to solve a mystery. Wow, this looks like the front of the Crowley estate. You are in the handsome cab. It is parked in front of a large manor. Okay, uh, get out. The cabbie takes ten shillings and says, Thank you, sir. What a polite guy. So here we are uh, in this uh, area. We see a man. Look, man. It, Police Inspector Harbour is on the porch. He says, Hello, Mr. Black. The body is in the kitchen. Inspector Strahd is inside. Okay, so uh, let's let's enter. We can assume by going north because we're standing in front of it, although that rule is not always hard and fast. Ah, so here we are in the opulent and appointed pink and green Crowley Manor. Uh, the furnishings are opulent. It has two large doors. I like to open cabinets. The first thing I do when I get in the house, the cabinet is locked. Interesting. So why don't we continue exploring, see if we can find Inspector Strahd, and uh, figure out what all this is about. Wow. Uh, Victorian furniture and plush Persian carpets. Look, furniture. A rosewood chest is here. Let's open the chest. It's fastened with two screws, I see. Well, let's not worry about that for now. Well, let's head to the south to see what else is here to be had in this opulent and, and potentially dangerous manner. Wow. You know, there's something I think is haunting about the fact that the graphics draw are drawn in such a way that they materialize slowly before you. It's very atmospheric. Old portrait. They have fiendish eyes. They don't look human. And the, the terseness of these games and the restrained tone and the slow fashion with which the graphics are etched. Uh, it's interesting. Okay. Um, look, Victrola. Is that a Victrola or a phonograph? It has a crank on the side. The crank is stuck. We look at the crank. A gold key is lodged in the crank. I wonder if that opens the cabinet. Oh, uh, get the key. Sorry. Um, get gold key. Yeah, it's very explicit about items that you can pick up. The Victrola begins playing. The music is Mozart. Interesting. Can't go this way, but perhaps we can head north, back into this sitting room, and um, continue having a look until we find the inspector. And uh, we enter, slowly materializing before us is a dark room with a cr crouching figure in the corner. Uh, if you can see, you are in a dimly lit room. A small figure is discovered in the darkness. It's too dark to see much. The figure is on the floor. Talk figure. My name is Devon. No man murdered my master. Now it is loose. I hear nothing intelligible. His mind has snapped. So you can see it's just not giving us much quarter here in terms of making us feel comfortable or, or like this the world or the logic of this game is visible to us yet and uh, you know sometimes that's a bad decision but in this case I believe that uh, Jim Pearson and his colleagues were playing with the previously understood constraints of the system in order to create some atmosphere for us we're in a book filled study bookshelves line the walls a large desk is here the room is cluttered is that a book on the desk Let's read the book. It reads, I am doomed today. The demon is trapped in the house. He'll be here long after my death. Read book. The demon has corrupted my blood. He will infest the generations that follow me. Ooh, it's not a good thing you want to read when you come to the house and you suddenly can't find your colleague, the inspector. Want anything on these shelves that will help? Um, open desk. A crystal ball is here. Wow, okay get crystal ball okay look in crystal ball it's glowing faintly interesting let's continue through the house and go back the way we came and as we enter the dark room we find the mysterious figure has fallen Devon what happened his mind has snapped look figure Davon's throat has been ripped out wow that's uh, not what you want to hear um, okay, I wonder if we could could find the inspector anytime soon. 
That would be good. Um, listen, nothing intelligible. Rosewood chest. One thing that is important to this game is that you use all five of your senses, um, which can be, you know, it's a common conceit of some modern text games that different things will happen if you speak, look, or listen, or call for help at different times in different places, but uh, uh, in games where the verbs are usually pretty limited, that each of your senses is so important. Let's unlock the cabinet. Okay. Open the cabinet with the gold key we found. <sighs> Inspector Strahd's body falls out onto the floor sketched slowly a smudge upon our pixelated screen. Very creepy. Look, Strad. His body is torn to pieces. Ooh. Well, that's not, that's not good, is it? Uh, let's figure out what's going on around here. Continue. And now we're, I'm frightened in every sequence that it draws slowly because I don't know. A small statue is here. You don't have it. Huh. You can only carry six items. Well, I don't think I need my ID card right now because the inspector is dead. Let's try to get the statue. It's a white elephant. You know, I, I don't know if I want that. Um, let's drop the statue. Continue on down the hall. Let's listen. I hear nothing intelligible. I'm a little spooked, aren't you? cursed manner, and it's interesting to see how atmosphere and horror can be created with such primitive graphics and so few verbs, and, and the constraints of this machine almost enhance that by making us feel powerless and, and jarring our expectations of what to expect. <gasps> a tremendous force thrusts you against the wall. There is a hideous smell. I hear nothing intelligible. Every time we look, we, there's that force. But it uh, seems that we can continue. But uh, these are just little jump scares, if you will, to reward the adventurous player. It's interesting how um, f scares are considered things that you, you can and you want to discover here. Um, so let's continue north up the stairs. Uh, this is the kitchen. Uh, that's, that's an oven, that dark shape, and there's some indistinct marks that could be blood. There, there is blood spattered on the walls and pool on the floor. Read spatter. It's impossible. Look, blood. Boy, are you grisly. Now that's a sort of funny tease coming from Mr. Pearson. Uh, some of his work can be very, very grisly. Another game of his I played, um, The Institute, was uh, interesting and a bit horrific, but um, I may avoid it for this series because it has so many mental health stereotypes in it. Um, Look, pool. Uh, the corpse is nowhere to be seen. A nailed shut door is north. Interesting. Um, well, why does it let me examine the blood? Interesting. There's something. A brown slimy growth is on the floor. Okay. Um, I don't really know if that's something that I want, but uh, let's try to take it. It's a visible item. Great. <laughs> Look, growth. It's indescribable. Wonderful. Oh, okay, yeah, that's uh, okay. Interesting. So right now the door is nailed shut. The corpse is nowhere to be seen. Um, let's continue exploring. We have our growth. And, uh, wow. Even the drawing of the cabinet slowly. It's frightening me because I don't know what kind of shape that could be hovering there. You're in an exquisite dining room with a huge oak table and a crystal chandelier. A plate of delicious looking food is here. I wonder if the growth is alive. Listen speak. To whom? I wonder, can you talk to the growth? Yeah, maybe it's not a living thing, I'm not really sure. Um, here we find a, a pantry, shelves of well, a well-stocked pantry uh, with shelves and shelves of food. And open, oh, 
The brown growth shot away from you and begins devouring the food. Oh, no. Um, come back here, growth. It isn't here. Wow. Um, we've lost our growth. It would have been nice to have uh, fed it from the plate, maybe. It's growing at a tremendous rate. It's almost as large as you are. Um, oh, wow. Okay. The growth towers over you. It's still consuming food. Um, I wonder if our lives are going to end like this, consumed by a growth. Talk growth. Wow. <laughs> well, I think that's what happens. Uh, the growth completely devoured you. Well, you are starting the game over. By the grace of a mythical spirit, your life is spared. Continue on. I see. So maybe with 40 shillings, um, we, uh, we can get back to the mansion. But let's see if I have a save. Um, I think I did make one. Yes, I did. Good, because uh, why don't we try feeding the growth in here where the amount of food uh, is going to be limited. Because uh, it seems like if we take it into the pantry, we can't avoid it getting out of control. But if we feed it in the pantry, perhaps it could do something about that uh, locked cabinet, maybe. Um, you know, I admit some of these puzzles are actually uh, very difficult and intense. Yep, here's our friend, the brown slimy growth. Well, we thought we were nice London detectives setting out to solve a mystery, and my, how things have changed. We're uh, picking growths up off the ground in a cursed manner. You know, when I joined the police force, this was not uh, the fate that I expected to encounter. I don't know about you guys. But uh, I think managing the issue of the growth has made me a little less afraid of the unknown. Put growth on tape. On plate. To growth. Feed growth. Give food to growth. Maybe this is not a good idea. Okay. The growth slides over to the plate. It devours the food and grows to the size of a small dog. Well, that's pretty uh, manageable, isn't it? The growth shoots under the china cabinet and disappears. The cabinet falls with a crash, and here we see the disarranged cabinet and whatever it is the growth has knocked over, lying on the floor. A letter opener and a hand axe fall out of the smashed cabinet. Oh. Don't get. Oop, let's see, what can we drop? Um, drop our ID card. We will get this hand axe. And we can leave the ID card here in the dining room that's been ransacked by our friend, the growth. Interestingly enough, uh, we'll continue on. So that, that was sort of a cool puzzle. I wouldn't necessarily have presumed that the way to open the cabinet would be to feed a plate of food to a growth, but again, these adventure games were designed to sort of confound people for a long time. In a sense, value for your dollar was still the same kind of uh, mis misplaced and slightly absurd value then that it is now, that if something takes you hours and hours and if it frustrates you and you never feel like you've completed it, then you've gotten your money's worth, um, which is kind of interesting and counterproductive uh, way to go about entertainment. So if you see, there's a plywood wall to the north. I'm going to swing my hand axe at it. Um, axe wall. Um, chop. Oops. Chop wall. The axe chops a hole in the wall. So maybe we could go through the hole. Go a hole. Chop wall again. Not now. Go wall, enter hole, look in hole, there's a large hole in the north wall. Um, 
So I can't, uh, can't, can't go in the hole. Let's see if maybe we can do something with our letter opener. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm absolutely getting my value for a dollar um, for this experience. We're uh, we're actually coming to the end of our time um, for this current episode of Lo-Fi Let's Plays. I hope you enjoy um, exploring these old artifacts with me. Um, this one was particularly scary, so I'm sorry if you uh, watched this at bedtime. Um, here's our ransacked room. I wonder if we can even leave. Oh, I wonder. This door is nailed shut. Can it be open? A nailed shut door is north. Chop door. Look boards. Look nails. Hmm. Well, you know, it takes a lot of experimentation, and um, lately I've been uh, reading Bob Redrup's Adventure Gamer's Manual, which uh, often had pretty logical advice that you could apply in uh, any single situation wherein you were stuck in an adventure game. It often seems like the answers are obscure and that you'd never think of them, but there's actually a very logical and well-designed process of elimination that, in a good game, the player can sort of use, like an input device or like a game mechanic itself, to figure out what, what they should do. And uh, this practice of, of mapping one's own way, of um, mentally cordoning off sections of the game as related to one another while others may not be related to one another, um, is, is a strategic practice that these games were sort of built to encourage and, and to soothe. So now, let's see, we see the rosewood chest. Um, unscrew chest. The screws come out. A crucifix is here, along with an old yellowed note. Well, we don't, let's see, we can drop the gold key. Um, get crucifix. Oh, uh, in this game I didn't have my holy water um, from the driver, so we might be a little stuck anyway. Let's drop the letter opener and we'll read the letter as a way of saying goodbye to one another today. Read old note. The note reads 5271. And with this little mystery um, on the tips of our tongues, we're going to say goodbye, uh, and with some relief, I think, to Creepy Crowley Manor. Um, again, while I don't know whether um, these other ventures always succeed in creating the atmosphere that they're trying to create, you know, for example, I thought the quake was very unfair, like I got shot just for picking up an apple that I would have paid for, and, and I ended up in a grave, and uh, I found a gold watch in a pile of rubble, by digging with a crowbar, which doesn't seem, you know, like it follows the logic of, of exploring the adventure world. But uh, this one, uh, it's working quite well with the format. So if you'd like to check it out yourself and see if you can solve the Curse of Crowley Manor, it's uh, listed under the Apple II eGames at uh, the invaluable resource virtualapple.org. You can find more lo-fi let's plays on my YouTube channel. Um, and if you'd like to tweet at me, it's at Lee Alexander or email Lee at LeeAlexander.net and share your memories of old computer games for the Apple, the Commodore 64, and things like that, which made particular impressions on you, and maybe they'll be featured in a future Lo-Fi Let's Play. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming along. Hope we didn't scare you too bad. Have a great week. Bye.